Welcome back, everybody, to Zero Point Reviews. We're going back old school, Terminator style, with James Cameron's The Terminator. All right, Kevin, Will, have you guys seen this one before? What did you think? I'm, I'm going to start with you, Will. It sounds like this was your first time checking this one out? Second to Second oh, time. Okay. Um, watched it the first time when we saw that this was coming up. All right. Because, yeah. Oh, we wanted to watch Terminator 2, and... Well, no, see, we were going to watch the Rift Tracks of Terminator Salvation. That's how it came about. And then somehow that spiraled into watching the original Terminator because we wanted to watch Terminator 2 somehow off of Terminator 4. <laughs> it's, it makes oh, you're jumping around in time just like timeline. the movies do. Yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a weird rabbit hole. It really is at this point. Yeah. It could be worse. You could have started with a Terminator Dark Fate. Just saying. Oh. We saw Genesis. Genesis was pretty fucking awful. Um, most of them after, after yeah. once you get past, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it was after we saw the Rift Tracks of Terminator Three that we were going to jump ahead to Salvation, but then we wanted to wash the taste of Terminator Three out of our mouths, out of our brains, so to speak. <sighs> so that's why we went back to Terminator One. Okay. Because then we we're going to watch Terminator Two, which we actually never watched. I'm realizing. Well, I realized earlier. <laughs> okay, and Kevin, That's still you... on the to-do list. All right, and Kevin, I think I saw this in the theater. Uh, I either saw really? it in the theater. Yeah, like my my parents were great. When I say this is going to sound bad, my parents were horrible and took me to see a lot of shit that I ought not to have seen. <laughs> so this came out one. right. And, and like so, I, I try to continue on that tradition, and I guess that's why my daughter's the way that she is. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they took me to see this in the theater, <laughs> and I was four years old. And I remember really liking everything yeah. until you get to the the special effects where he's pe peeling out his eye <laughs> and then the arm, and I just remember that terrifying me as a child. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have a similar experience because I saw this off of like VHS tape. Like, I don't know who rented it, if I rented it. My memory's a little fuzzy, but watching the VHS tape, I was just like, oh my God, that's that, that's some crazy gnarly stuff as a kid. I mean, as an adult, we watch it now and I'm like, wow, that's bad. Yeah, there's a lot of latex and it's it's pretty noticeable. I mean, but, that's a product of its era. It, it's got a charm to it. it. It's not like I hate it, but if it was like a 2022 movie trying to do that, and this is how it looked, I'd be like, <laughs> this is some shit right here. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing about Jim Cameron movies. It's like each one that he makes is top of the line special effects for that moment. Yeah. And that's worked out really well for him up in yes, Avatar. Yeah. Um, but once Avatar kind of hit, like Final Destination Four had come out and had just as good 3D effects, but a better story. Uh, <laughs> which and a shorter. lot of people went, "What?" Yes, shorter it was like half, half shorter. Uh, wasn't the retelling of Pocahontas on the Titanic and another planet with or Fern Gully on Fern Gully yes. in space? I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, up until that point. He was like, his movies were the echelon of special effects. So, I mean, if you could put that in mind, looking at this movie as an adult, like, it's it's still some gritty shit. Yeah. I mean, the miniatures work that they did with the Terminator, and when he backhands Kyle Reese, when he backhands, yeah, Kyle Reese, I forgot his actor's name. But when he backhands Michael him, Bean. I mean, Michael Bean. When he backhands him in the final moments of the movie, like that's, yeah. And how do you go from a miniature robot into that so smoothly? That's some uh, acting right there. Yeah, Act oh, he's fucking phenomenal. Acting and Stan Winston, who'd learned from Ray Harryhausen, well, at least yeah. all, all those techniques, I don't think he actually studied under him. But like in this movie, there's a lot of Harryhausen type effects. Yes. Uh, I didn't remember them being as many. I thought you saw more practical effects than what there actually were in this one. Yeah, I would agree. Which is still okay. I mean, everything looked great. Uh, yeah. Even the scene where it's 
supposed to be a dream that's a flash forward to the future somehow Sarah's having <laughs> without knowing anything about the dogs or whatever, but the dogs are going nuts as these survivors are coming in because yeah. one's a Terminator and he just starts shooting everybody and you see his eyes glowing red and they tried really hard to like make this as dark as they could so you couldn't see the rigging holding up the lights. Right. But, but uh, yeah, it was it was kind of noticeable. So I mean, some of it, yeah, it's 1984. You kind of have to suspend a little bit of disbelief. Hey, for 80, 84, they did a fantastic job. I mean, it, it if it stuck with us as kids, they clearly did something right to to haunt us for for most of our lives until we could grow up and actually see it for what it was. Yeah, and, and it. I mean, message wise, it's it's a neat commentary on on society and the human condition. But I think this one was a better horror story than anything else than getting a message across. I think so, too. Yeah. This kind of mimics what he did with, like, you know, he didn't do the first Alien movie, but it's another kind of sci-fi horror franchise. This one he created from this one to the next one, but his work from, like, going from Alien drama horror to Aliens was more action horror and he took that same kind of idea from this one to that one kind of makes me wonder if he had had a chance to do a third one, what he had in mind for that. And if it would have been more of like a, what he would have, what direction he would have gone at that point. I don't think he would have gone romantic horror or anything like that. It'd be kind of weird with Terminator, but Hey, you know, there's other movies that try and nail that concept down anyway, but I we're not here curious. to King shame. Nope. No King shaming here. <laughs> I, I would be very curious. I know he, you know, was kind of involved along the way in the other ones, but not really. I just kind of, he's only got five or six movies, he said, left in him. And most of those are going to be Avatar sequels. I'd like to see him come back and do one more Terminator movie to round out his trilogy. Because this is his franchise. And he, yeah. I think with his special effects today... Man, imagine a badass Terminator movie by this guy. Because James Cameron, he's no hack. Yeah, some of his movies can be a little generic, whatever. He's got spectacle and epicness down, though, and he always delivers on visuals. Yeah, I mean, if if you want to look at it, like, the peak of what he was, of what he was able to do in a non-sci-fi way, but still just being entertaining, look at True yes. Lies. Like, that movie was fucking, like, balls Love out. True Lies. Uh, it was like a Michael Bay flick, but good. So you like with an actual story to it, right? And great yeah. actors. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll say it. In, even in True Lies, there were great actors. Hey, and don't so, let us not forget the Abyss. Yes, I love that. I know that's got a mixed reaction from people, but I really like that one. I think that's the real Avatar of his of his career instead of Avatar. <laughs> I didn't see that until I was like 31 or 32. Oh, yeah. Was, you had more grown up eyes watching that. I see. Yeah. Um, and I liked it. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize that it, the special effects in that inspired what, what you would see in Donnie Darko, where he sees the souls going in front of people and they're following their fate. That's kind of what you'd see in the abyss. And, and it looked nicer on Tony Darko at that point. So I, I don't know. Had I not seen something like that, I'd have been more blown away by The Abyss. And it's not to say that The Abyss is a bad movie. Yeah. It's just, I don't dig it as much as everyone else usually does. Nope, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So what story would you even think is possible with the, Termin with the third Terminator from James Cameron? I mean... Well, that's the thing. Nobody really knows except James Cameron because he's kind of back. He backed off of after Terminator Two. He felt like he probably hit the pin, hit that pinnacle, like the the zenith of the franchise. <laughs> right. I mean, most most trilogies from the eighties going into their third one usually tank on the <laughs> third one. You know, Last Crusade is an exception to the rule. Almost like I could point out Beverly Hills Cop Part Three. You know, one's really good. Second's awesome. The third one. Why do we even talk about the third one? Because it was you know, most great are like that. Yeah, you brought it up. That's why we're talking about it. <laughs> but you're also talking about like a third uh, Terminator movie, and we all saw how Terminator three, four, five, and six have turned out. 
luckily we got the tv show which we will be getting to in the near future but you know i i can't i can't just not think that he didn't have some sort of idea on where he could possibly take the next story i kind of feel like maybe he'd jump into the future a little bit more with a more grown-up john connor assuming you know leadership maybe there's elements of that in like you know salvation that's kind of, i think that's the one he was a little involved with with mcg but then after that i think he completely checked out terminator 3 he really wasn't involved with he just was like just give me my money. You know, I was yeah, like, right. work on what I work on. <laughs> just counting the money in the background. Gene. And I would not, I don't blame him for that. I didn't mind the third one too much, but it, it has its own problems. But, you know, Salvation of all the sequels beyond part one, I actually like Salvation the most. And the Rift Tracks is really fun too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Salvation. I still haven't brought myself to watch it. Like, I saw part three twice in one day, I think, the opening oh weekend. God. Wow, that's a bit much. Why? Yeah, I, hanging out with my friends. Yeah. Uh, like, Dude, I went to see it in the morning. Friends. Then, like, they had a watermelon, and I was super hungry, and I love watermelon. So it's like I ate a shit ton of watermelon and went to go see the movie again. <laughs> had to pee the entire time because I ate like half a fucking watermelon in 10 minutes. God, it just wouldn't fucking end. And when you have to pee that bad and you want the movie to just end in general because it's just not good, all you could do is sit there and pick apart all the things that you hate about it. It's so tedious. It's a tediously long movie. It's a tediously long, unnecessarily tediously long movie. Like, they stretch out that last scene like so fucking long between the military base and then the fucking particle accelerator tunnel and then to the hangar and then to oh, a yeah. new hangar well let's Just... not get too far along on terminator 3 talk we're, we're talking about terminator 1 right now like if we want to dissect terminator 3 we could do that a completely another time and have like four hours to talk talk about how horrible <laughs> all the sequels are but um to your, to your point idea. though you bring up a good question like how did you feel on the runtime of this did this feel like a long movie to you or did this feel like this actually came in at a good time for me personally, this one came in at a pretty good time, uh, and we'll get to it again next week. But rewatching part two felt more tedious than this one. Really? Okay. Yeah. And well, how did I you feel was... on the wrong time? I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. What did this clock in at? Like an hour and forty-five minutes? I, I think I so. Yes. Actually. Yeah, it actually felt pretty pretty crisp. Like. I didn't really feel like it dragged too terribly much and any of the slow moments they didn't really like linger for like forever you know they they kept he kept it pretty concise with his editing whether he, who his editor was I didn't catch the name of the credits but they they did a pretty good job for James in this one yeah it moved along at a good clip and there was downtime like when they were in the Tiki Hotel with the kitchen for making plastic kind of have a kitchen as one does. Oh, what's for kitchen. dinner? Plastic. <laughs> plastic under glass. No plastic even, in a pipe. Even that scene isn't bad, and it actually works out pretty well in terms of giving the lull for their romance of a night or whatever, as she says in the ending credits. You know, as she says, as she's driving to the gas station at the end of the movie. Yeah, I thought it was good. Good acceleration, good speed. That part at the end, like I really like that, and it's 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 worth examining on certain levels. Because for me personally, like Sarah Connor is by and large a useless and annoying character throughout like ninety percent of the flick. Yeah, until Kyle gets shot. Or at least until they get down, and then she's kind of like, "I've got powers." Oh. She got supercharged by a cop from the future. No, not a not time cop. I'm sorry. On your feet, soldier. Yeah, that was corny as fuck. Um, yeah, but I, mean, I like it. It's the '80s. It's got to be corny. Exactly. Everything about the '80s was corny. Bazinga. Exactly. But like for me, Sarah Connor died with Kyle Reese. 
that yeah. was somebody else completely that walked out of that factory that night and drove down to Mexico for you know, 15 or excuse me, 13 years, whatever it was. Until she uh, drops off Edward Furlong with uh, child welfare <laughs> in L.A. much later down the road. Yeah, in L.A. of all places, where are the bombs going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> they did like the touch with the picture um, that Michael Bean had his character. You know, when he would look at, you know, Sarah, you know, he's looking at it. And, you know, later on, they framed that at the very end of her getting that picture. And it's like. Oh, if he had not lost that picture halfway through and he could show it to her, she could be like, I've never been there. I don't know where that picture came from. That's that's not me. That could have been a nice little piece of evidence to show her like, no, this shit's real, bitch. You got to listen to me. You know, go with me if you want to live. (laughs) Yeah. How'd you feel that whole scene where where she was just kind of like ripped from being kind of scared and freaked out because of the phone book killer to actually being assaulted being like attacked and then kyle comes out of nowhere when you see that big hunk of meat coming at you from in the form of arnold schwarzenegger wouldn't wouldn't you be like somebody please fucking help me there's an austrian with an uzi (laughs) (laughs) uh that to me is one of the things that kept this movie relevant um and not because of the music or the club scene or anything like that per se. But I think our country's still dealing with a little bit of PTSD right now from like mass shootings and people who could be terminators for lack of a better term, just yeah. randomly going into fucking places like clubs in Colorado or Florida or Walmarts, whatever the fuck. And, and having a situation that Sarah kind of found herself sitting in and, and tech noir. So, I mean, that part was a little hard to watch. It can be a little hard to watch if if you've not seen this before, but you are affected by that sort of thing. Um, uh, I, that, that kept it a little bit more relevant and real. And that much I liked about it because there are so many things that are, that are obsolete about this movie, like pagers and pay phones and VCRs oh God, and right. shit. Answering you know, machines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's just Walkmans. that's one of those things that you, the Walkman that was some, that was another thing. <laughs> that's some powerful Walkman in. Uh, thirty-two inch TVs that have tubes in them, shit like that. that you kill people with the TV. <laughs> um, I mean, all that's changed, but that that in itself has kept the movie relevant in certain ways. Yeah, and I'd also give you another scene of like the assault on the the police precinct. That very much felt like something yeah, James Cameron saw John Carpenter's assault on Precinct 13 and was like, I like that. I'm going to put my own spin on that. Speaking of John Carpenter, what about the music? Music's pretty good. It's pretty iconic. I mean, it gets way better in the second one. Yes. Because of all the, they probably had a bigger budget, better equipment to work with. But in this one, I, hey, da-da, da-da, it's a little more slower. And not as bombastic, but it's good. Yeah, it's very tech, not techno. It's a uh, um, synthesizer. Yes. And and it's a little bit more like hammer on uh, pipes for the for T2. And, and you still get that feeling, that iconic feeling, like you said. Uh, like it, It's another character to this movie that makes you feel and give you goosebumps and shit. Uh, it adds that suspense and stress and action. And then in the second one, then you're just kind of like, seeing so many fucking explosions and hearing this music that you're just like shit in your pants i and ear candy galore in t2 and you know just for full disclosure we're doing terminator 2 next week so we'll be getting into more detail on that one next week but yeah this t2 is pure eye candy and ear candy this one was a little more intimate downbeat and more serious and i i definitely like the more horror aspect of this Agreed. This one is where they started and then realized that they couldn't go backwards. Like Arnold had to be a good guy going forward because of his fame. Right. Uh, and so like, that's why this one is so singular is because you've never really seen him as a, as a bad guy before. You'd only really seen him as a uh, dubbed over Hercules, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he did a little bad in red heat, but it wasn't too, right. it wasn't like that the entire movie. So. Yeah, I mean, horrible I mean, this... Russian accent. <laughs> no, he's not Russian. Of course, he'd have an accent. I know. 
but he's supposed to be a Russian in that one. That's true. I haven't seen that since ages anyway. I know, right? But uh, this, this set up so much for him, like just kickstarted his fucking fame with that one sentence, I'll be back. Yeah. Like, and then because it's the 80s and everything has to go to a fucking extreme and be milked for every fucking thing it's worth, that turned out to that little phrase he said in six other movies aside from this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, he said it in Commando the next year in 1985. Yep. Uh, in Raw Deal after that in 1986. The Running Man in 1987. I love uh, Running Man. Oh, such a dope flick. Twins. I don't really recall per se, but he did that in 1988. I can believe it. Total, <laughs> Total Recall. I do remember him saying that in. Super dope it, flick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in 93, he did Last Action Hero, which apparently that was like a, what, what would you say, a satire? <laughs> Meta look kind of. at the action flick. That's actually not that bad of a movie. Most people overlook that one, but I think that one's one of his last big badass action blockbuster movies outside of say like true lies but arnold did great in this in my opinion i don't yeah. remember who the bad guy was but uh, the only bit of that movie that i had seen is like he just blasts some guy in a fucking street or alley and he's trying to make a point and he's like i just shot a man yeah. in broad daylight and, and nothing's realized, happening like, no- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, and then one horrible day in 2000, he said it for the last time in 12 years in the sixth day, which for anyone who hasn't seen the sixth day, good for you. Um, it is middling at best. I thought it was fun. I like the uh, end of days more. Ooh. <laughs> what does that tell you? Anyway, we don't have to go on an Arnold diatribe. We could do that for a couple hours, too. Hey, special yeah. requests if people want to see it, put it in the comments below. And then the last one was uh, Expendables 2. And I think that was fan service and uh, an obligation in a way. Like, you owe us that one. <laughs> I still haven't seen Expendables 2 or 3. And I know they're making a fourth one. I mean, I have them. I just haven't gotten to actually around to watching them. I liked the first two. The second one wasn't that good. Or, excuse me, the third, third one wasn't that good. Okay. Like, I wanted to like it more because Rousey was in it. But, yeah. You know, first two are dope um and then the, the last thing i really have for what i what i like about this flick that ultimately they fuck up really bad in the third movie and oh here we go it's it's just really bad and lazy writing uh where for lack of a better term they kill sarah off with cancer but you have to remember, at the end of this Terminator, she has sex with Kyle while he's been wearing... Let me just back up so you guys can see this here. Another man's shitty fucking pants. You see the shit stain there? He had sex with her wearing those pants that have shit in them right there. So instead of just saying, oh gosh, Sarah Connor died from cancer... Let's have it be something that's a little bit more like, oh, I don't know, um, in in canon or, or continuity. So wh- I had to ask myself, what can happen if you have sex with somebody that's got feces all over them? Namely, like a drug addict's feces. And one of the things, or several things, that unchecked could have killed Sarah by part three, other than cancer, is herpes, the human papilloma virus, which would turn into cervical cancer, uh gonorrhea the clap chlamydia which contrary to popular belief is not a soup uh syphilis <laughs> hiv its older brother aids and of course the deadly motaba virus just like in that al pacino movie mm. <laughs> well this conversation took a turn i was not expecting yeah well done. So, that having been said do not have sex in someone else's fucking shitty pants. You are especially when he had no lives. underwear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe there was a shower scene. There was never a shower scene. 
She took a shower. I don't think he did. Well, thank God for her. Anyway, um, <laughs> she needed to do an acid bath after being with him. Yeah, he was kind of filthy. Like I could see like lice and shit like that. So, but otherwise, I, I all wow. kidding aside, I love Terminator, and I'm glad we got to do this one. Um, yeah. it's it's good to revisit. I'd say revisit it once or twice a year. Not once or twice a year. Once every other year or so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> twice a year is a bit excessive. I don't like it that much. <laughs> it's not Willy's Wonderland, damn it. Um, nope. It's not it's one no you can put on repeat and just always have it or play it along. I know some probably some hardcore fans can do that. But, you know, for most people, it's like, no, well, once, maybe twice a year at most. Otherwise, skip a year, alternate years. Now, Will, yeah. any last thoughts from you? awesome movie i'm thrilled we did it because that's why i watched this in a roundabout way kind of so awesome two yes. thumbs up from will all right yeah. and me love this movie it's basically my favorite of the terminator franchise arnold's great james cameron did an excellent job linda hamilton all the acting is great love michael bean wish he had gotten a much larger career out of this and maybe had seen him in another entry but maybe it's good for him and his character he did not show back up in parts three four five or whatever the fuck they ended up being the number on no, he could have kyle, been on the tv show that would have been cool kyle's character does show up in the fifth one but he's being played by this awful awful actor oh he's so just like this generic looking white guy like, oh, like you? The best gotcha. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not kidding, like me. I'm he has curly hair, and he looks really just like pasty. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go two thumbs up on this one myself. And hey, Kevin, final assessment. I don't think I know you said you loved it, but you got a score like two thumbs up, thumbs in the middle. Where are you? At? I'm. This is two thumbs up. This is a really important movie for her cinema history. Yeah. It it pretty much defines for a good 20 years what time travel movies would be like or what, what their rules would be. So this is totally relevant on a sci-fi level. It's relevant on an action flick level. Uh, and it's just fucking dope. It's a dope flick. It will right. make you excited to keep going. Yes, it actually, it, it will. And, you know, by some odd weirdness to it it really actually makes you want to watch the second one like pretty quick with it so you're at least it's like you know i know there's another good one in here and you get to the second one it's like okay that that's a little bit better and then from there you can kind of peter off with the rest of the franchise and hey that's probably the best way to end this episode if you like this video please hit the like button comment below what did you like about this movie got any favorite lines any favorite scenes we want to hear about it make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell notification so you can always see when we get our new videos up all right thank you for every thank you for tuning in everybody we'll see you next time <laughs> That fucking green screen. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, that is it's my garage. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms. We got Facebook, Twitter. We are at Sons and Shadows. We're also on Instagram at Sons and Shadows Cast. We are at SonsandShadows.com. Thank you again, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.